Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Tonight I've got something uh, really special, at least for me, to share here. Now if you're one of my regulars, you know that I've been um, uh, exploring the southern hemisphere a little bit and looking for easy targets that I can uh, steal uh, from our friends in the south. And recently I captured the uh, Fighting Dragons uh, emission nebula. Now that nebula was very low to the, my horizon. I'm here in central Texas and I was able to capture that one as it rose just about 11 degrees over the horizon. So I thought I'd give another shot and uh, this one here should look familiar. This is the famous Carina Nebula. Unfortunately this nebula is too low. It, it doesn't even crest uh, the horizon at all and I haven't quite figured out how to get pictures through the the earth itself so I'm still working on that but in the meantime I needed an accomplice so I reached out to Logan over at Logan's Astro and proposed a uh, a data swap so now uh, if anyone does, isn't aware of Logan doesn't know his channel here's his channel over here I'll include a link uh, in the uh, description of this video uh, he is a uh, truly talented astrophotographer. His pictures are top-notch and um, what what we ended up doing is we swapped some data around. So I got uh, got to choose some of his data and he got to choose some of my data. I opted for Karina. How could I not? That's like another another famous southern hemisphere target that we never get to uh, uh, shoot at. So I got his data and I provided him with some of my data. He should be having a video out around the same time that I put this one out where he'll uh, cover the target uh, that um, he got from me. Now Logan's down in New Zealand and uh, occasionally some wizard pops up on his channel every now and then so definitely check him out. Alrighty, uh, let's look at this data. Now, he used the 65 PHQ. Uh, I, have this, I have the same scope, except mine's pink and I think his is green. <laughs> and uh, I believe he used an ASI 1600 mono uh, on this. And we got about 10 hours of exposure, if I recall. So, SHO, here's a, a look at the raw uh, stacked oxygen. looking pretty good and uh, here's the um, sulfur and again looking great how's that uh, ASCAR scope doing in the corners yeah I think that was one of the things that uh, drew me to this uh, scope and I think it was the same for Logan uh, we wanted good stars in the corners and I mean, you know, 1600 is only a micro four thirds sensor, but these stars are darn near perfect at the edges. And uh, of course, HA. So really excited uh, to get my hands on this data and um, I'm going to show you how I processed it. It was very straightforward, very easy image to process. Uh, the thing about astrophotography, the better the quality of the data that you're getting the easier it is to process it and after you've got a few steps down you don't have to sit and work with this for two or three hours like it was when you're first starting out with with terrible newbie data <laughs> so it really goes to show you to focus on uh, getting quality data because it'll, it'll, you'll just make your life easier when it comes to the processing Oh, and one little thing here. Um, this data is drizzled, so the files are pretty large. And uh, my computer is having some issues uh, reading the swap file on this. I've moved my PixInsight swap file to an NVMe drive, and it's still uh, dragging a little bit. So I'll have to see what I can do to resolve that. But anyway, if you notice the system running slow, that's all that is. Okay, so uh, first thing I did was just combine everything using the LRGB uh, tool that is uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, this guy here LRGB combination so just uncheck luminance and load um, sulfur into red hydrogen and green oxygen blue standard show palette standard Hubble palette and this is our unlinked auto stretch if I link them yeah <laughs> let's let's unlink that alright so uh, 
Now, I did not run dynamic background extraction on this. I mean, there's no gradient in here, and I did play with it, and I didn't like the results I was getting. Not every image needs dynamic background extraction. Uh, I'm not sure where Logan took this. He's got two locations. I think one of his locations is pretty dark, so maybe that's where he got this one from. All right, so with, uh, without doing dynamic background extraction, what do you think the first thing I did? Ah, look at that, Blur Exterminator. All right, so Blur Exterminator just does an incredible job on the stars, on the wide field stuff. Um, for those that don't know, Blur Exterminator is basically running deconvolution. It's AI-based deconvolution. Now, on this wide field stuff, you're not going to see too much of a sharpening in the nebula. I mean, it 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 tightened up the, uh, the dark clouds here a little bit. In some of these brighter spots, it did a pretty good job. But where it really shines on wide field shots is the work on the stars. And then next up, I pulled the stars out. All right, so we pull the stars out because it's just easier to process the nebula and it, it allows you to really pull out some of the fainter bits of the nebula without having to worry about blowing out your stars. That's the main reason we uh, remove stars now. And thanks to pro, uh, programs like Star Exterminator or StarNet++, this has become a common practice in processing astrophotography. All right, so I made another copy and here we go. So let's see. So there's no stretch. Boy, look how bright that <laughs> this uh, this center part of Carina is. Without any stretch at all, uh, we can still see it here. Amazing. All right. So there we go with a, a pretty hard stretch there. So basically, what I did here is I just accepted the. Uh, the unlinked auto stretch values of the screen transfer function tool and use the histogram to apply that setting. Uh, I find with Hubble palette, SHO type images, narrow band in general, uh, the auto stretch, it gives me a good place to start as opposed to trying to balance the colors and then stretch manually. Uh, I, just, I just like the results that we get this because you're seeing a nice balance in the colors. We got the yellows and golds, we got the the green in there, the blues looking good. Uh, in this case we're not even getting a whole lot of magenta showing up. And from here on it's mostly curves work. Now I'm just going to click through. You can see I'm working on contrast. Now you're seeing a mask being applied. Uh, that's because this area in particular is really bright and we have a lot of faint details. So while I'm pulling in, uh, increasing curves to pull out or reveal uh, this fainter detail, I don't want to blow out the core because it was already pretty bright as it was. Now you're seeing that I'm putting a different mask in here because these areas were getting a bit too dark for my taste. Uh, and there you can see what I'm doing is increasing the contrast because it's hard to see but there is a there is structure down there. So using the curves to darken this area but pull these uh, details in these fainter spots out. Now you're starting to see a little bit of separation there. I thought that was good enough and now uh, we got a mask on there and now I'm working on this part here. So is this the keyhole? I know there's a, a bright spot in Karina that's called the keyhole. I don't know if this is it or not. I don't know what this is. It, it, it reminds me of the trapezium in, in the Orion Nebula with the uh, with how bright it is. Okay, so what do you think I did just here? Look at all this contrast I pulled out in one one shot here. So we have this mask on there and I use the HDR multi-scale transform tool. So as long as the information in this area is not completely blown out, 
you can use the HDR multi-scale transform tool to work with this high, dy high dynamic range in this area. If you're uh, shooting a target like M42 and the core is just completely blown out, uh, then that's where you can take um, uh, really short subs, you know, like 10 second subs, and then use those to create an HDR image, and then you would use the HDR multi-scale transform tool to take advantage of that. Now, this is pretty much where I ended up. Uh, I moved over to a different workspace and did some work on the stars. And here's what the stars look like. So I just uh, did my typical uh, initial arc sign H stretch, followed up by regular stretches. And, um, and then after that, I used the SCNR tool to remove the green and then an invert and apply that again to remove the uh, to get the, all the purple and magenta out of the stars. And so putting those in there, I ended up with this, which looks really good. Uh, I did a little bit more tweaking. Uh, I think I think I felt like there were too many stars in this one. You know, I go back and forth on <laughs> how many stars, and I think this was a little bit too busy. So I dialed it back a little bit. Maybe I Maybe I felt like I overstretch the stars a little bit. I wanted them a little tighter. So that's what you got over here and then I took this image into Photoshop and tweaked it a little bit with uh, the camera raw filter and here's the final image. So those are from that are familiar with my style. You know I like a lot of color in my um, in my uh, uh, narrow band Hubble palette shots. Uh, I'm always an advocate of leaving some of that green in there, and I'm quite happy with uh, the amount of green that's showing up in this target. And I really like the way the blues came out and the dust lanes. The whole thing is, just came out great, I thought, and really happy that I had a chance to uh, play with some of Logan's data. Okay, so uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, drop a comment. Let me know how you think. Uh, this image turned out. Uh, and are there any other southern targets that I should be uh, looking to poach from my friends down in the southern hemisphere? Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking. So anyway, with that, clear skies and good evening. <laughs>